People always ask me, can I cheat on the carnivore diet? Surely just a slice of cake, a few vegetables won't really hurt. Is that true though? I mean, if you look at famous carnivores such as Jordan Peterson or Michaela Peterson, if they have even just one vegetable, it can paralyze them for up to months. Personally, if I have a plate of pasta or a cup of spinach, it can leave me in bed for a few days and even feel suicidal at times. Now you may be thinking, oh that's nonsense, there's no way a little vegetable can do that much to you. You've got to be lying and that can't be the case for everyone. This is not a joke. On the carnivore diet, we have more severe reactions and in this video, I'm going to explain why. Now, as you probably know, the carnivore diet is the elimination of all toxins and all possible things that can harm our body and purely just eating animal products. Now, as a result of this, we become very sensitive to crappy foods. I mean, it makes sense. If you were to take alcohol for the first time or cocaine, you would be more sensitive to the drug and you would feel the effects more. Now, if you were to take it every week, your body would start to develop defense mechanisms to build a tolerance to this drug and the effects would lessen over time. This can be seen in drugs such as coffee as well or even just sugar. With coffee, for example, maybe you have one and then you need more and you need more to feel the same effect that you get from the first initial coffee that you had. This is because your body builds a tolerance and it builds defense mechanisms to stop you from eating this product. Now on the carnival diet, when you cut out everything, the sugars, refined grains, carbs, your body becomes really sensitive when you try and cheat or reintroduce this. After a while of being a carnival, you simply can't enjoy the foods that you used to, such as cake, such as sugars, pastas, or vegetables. You detox your body for a long period of time from these substances and your body becomes way, way more sensitive as the defense mechanisms that has been built up its whole life have now not been used so they become weakened. Now most people actually think that this is one of the bad traits of the carnival diet because if you're out with friends you want to have a slice of cake or maybe you're out partying and want to have some alcohol, you'll feel way, way worse now than you did before. However, I believe that statement is very, very dangerous to make. So what you're actually saying is that it's a bad thing for your body to accurately be able to detect toxins and poisons that enter your body and produce an appropriate feedback response to stop you from eating them. I think that's incorrect and it's one of the best things about the carnival diet. I think another reason why this is one of the best diets is because of this, because you don't have all these seed oils and all these things that bypass the hunger signals in your bodies and ruin your hormones. On this diet, you can truly trust your own body signals. I think that is one of the main reasons why everyone is sick. They're eating crap foods, seed oils, and stuff that bypass the hunger signals in their bodies, and they don't know when to stop. But on the carnival diet, you can trust your own body signals, and your body can tell you if it doesn't want a certain food or if it does. Now you may ask, how come before I started the carnival diet, when I had you know a plate of pasta or a slice of cake, I didn't really feel too bad, but now I feel terrible. Now this is because from the day you were born, you've been eating most likely crappy food your whole life. So your body has built these defense mechanisms and you've built a tolerance, so you don't notice the effects as much. It doesn't actually mean that they're good for us. It just means that our baseline level of mood is just at such a constant low that we don't actually know what feeling good is until we cut it all out. I notice when I have a plate of pasta or some vegetable, all my old symptoms come back and I think it's even worse than before. But this probably isn't the case. It's just because now we feel so good, so you're contrasting to before, which makes it seem even more worse. So maybe it's not actually that our bodies are way, way more sensitive. It's just that we've been feeling so good for so long, and now when we go back to how we used to feel, it seems so much more terrible than it really is. This diet is so, so good. We do not have to rely on doctors or health professions to tell us what to eat or what is good and what is bad for us. We can just trust our body and listen to our body's signals. I mean, if you want, you can test this. Eat nothing but fatty red meat for 30 days. Then slowly try and cheat or introduce some vegetables and I guarantee your body will tell you if it likes it or not. I don't care what science or what you say about vegetables. If you detox from them and then you reintroduce them and feel terrible, your body is clearly rejecting them and it is not good for you. I mean, it makes sense. When we cook onions, our eyes start to cry. When we eat peppers and chilies, our mouth gets very hot and we cannot eat it anymore. This is the vegetable's way of making sure that we don't eat it. This has just become normalized in society though, you know, when you eat onions, you cry, you know, peppers and chilies are hot, but it's not actually a good thing. It's the plant's way of telling you to stop eating it. I mean, you hear heaps of people having nut allergies and all these allergies to plants, but have you ever heard of anyone who had a meat allergy? 
personally, I haven't. Plants are trying to stop you from eating them because they don't want a future generation of humans who still consume them. Now, our perception of cheating has to change. Cake, vegetables, pasta is not food. If someone told me that I'd get the side effects from the foods such as cake, vegetables and pasta, where I feel suicidal, depressed, tired, lethargic and my pain flares, that drug would definitely be illegal. I mean, I think it's just that we've all been brainwashed that this food isn't that bad, you know? You can have a few cheat meals here, a slice of cake, and also our body has built defense mechanisms, so we don't feel the effects as much. If someone told me in a hundred years time that cake, sugar, vegetables, and refined grains, seed oils, were not edible for the human body, and we weren't allowed to consume them, that would make total sense. I mean, vegetables are starvation foods, if you think about it. Before you've been brainwashed and whatever society's told you, think about eating maybe leaves from a tree. Like, would you really wanna eat leaves from the tree or roots from the ground or stems from a branch? Doesn't, I wouldn't wanna eat that. Modern culture and all these fitness influencers say, oh, you can have a cheat meal once a week. Do we really want to be having poisons and toxins once a week? That's like saying, Oh, you can have some cocaine once, once a week, a few times a month. Why would we be wanting to do that? And if you can't stick to your diet without having a cheat meal, I think you really need to reassess your diet. Now, I understand that we all have different personality styles and some people, if they cheat, it can be a slippery slope and lead them to more than one day, two days, even weeks and months of relapsing. So if you're anything like me, one slice of cake turns into two, three, and then the next day, oh, and then a little bit more won't hurt. Then the week is ruined, then the month, and I'm back to where I started. And I don't really think this is for us to blame. Sugar is inherently a very addictive substance, and the vegetables, oils, and stuff they put in the food are made to bypass your body's hugness signals, such as leptins, which make us eat more and actually crave it more. Also, depending on your health goals, if maybe your health is pretty good, you've been on the carnival diet for a while, then it may not be as detrimental to cheat and have you know a slip up here and there when you're with friends. But if you're anything like me and healing from a lot of things, or even worse, you have a lot of autoimmune conditions, cheating can even set you back months. So you probably do not want to do it. At the end of the day, I just don't see any net positive to cheating. I mean, maybe if it's a social event and you're going out a few times a year and you just wanna let loose and have a bit of alcohol, then sure, fine, go for it. But if you really, really want to heal, you've had a history of suicidal thoughts, autoimmune conditions, and other really bad stuff, I would not recommend this. Now, if you want to find out more about the foods that we eat that keep us full, satiated, and do not make us crave sugar, so we're less likely to cheat, check out this video here, where we go through our realistic day in the life of eating as a 19 year old.